Hey guys, it's JM. I have a fun activity today. I'm going to go through the plotting hardware spreadsheet and grade some of the components into the tier list that I have. Uh, I've spent a lot of time looking at this plotting spreadsheet. Of course, we have, uh, since the last couple months uh, of plotting, we have Mad Max Plotter, which most of the series Chia plotters are using. I have, since the first video I did on Mad Max, spent a whole lot more time with it on a whole lot more systems. So I have a pretty good understanding how this works and scales. Uh, there's the new all DRAM plotter called Bladebit, which uh, has just produced outstanding results. And there's a ton of other cool stuff that has been released. Some companies have released these Chia optimized plotting SSDs and there's all kinds of cool stuff. So I'm gonna go through kind of uh, my list of stuff and uh, hardware and how I grade them for the plotting tier list. So we're gonna start with, I think this is the Ryzen 9 3950X and Ah, uh, you know, I'm between C and D tier. I'm going to give it a C tier because um, it's a great processor. Um, AMD's fast. The, the results are outputting about five to six TIB a day on the plotting spreadsheet. But, you know, unfortunately, it's expensive. It's harder to find. And, um, you know, for the dollar price performance ratio of plotting versus what you can get with other CPUs, I don't think it's a top pick. Uh, and that kind of goes with something similar. I would rank the uh, Ryzen 9 5950X. It's it's a great CPU. It's a great gaming CPU, but I think it's going on Amazon today for about 800 bucks uh, for a 16 core, which is not a good deal as far as price per core. Uh, I think the new AMD you know Zen 3 stuff is great. I have 5800X as I use as my gaming machine. It's also a very fast CPU for plotting for, uh, but again, not for price to performance it is pretty expensive per core versus what you can get elsewhere. So for that, I'm gonna give it a C tier. Uh, and while we're on the AMD kick, I'm gonna give the Threadripper Pro a, an S tier. If you go look through the plotting spreadsheet, um, which I've spent a decent amount of time on, uh, some of the, if you go to the Mad Max tab, uh, some of the top systems are these uh, Threadripper Pros. This guy, Grandmaster, who's got the Row 5, has a Threadripper Pro 3995, WX and he's got seven Samsung 980 Pros in RAID 0 and he is getting 18.38 TIB a day running four uh, instances of Mad Max. That's uh, ungodly high. Um, now, unfortunately, this, this system is extremely um, high cost. You know, the Threadripper Thread Pro is not a cheap part. Hopefully, if you're buying this, you're using it besides something else besides plotting after you're done with it. But just because it's uh, dominating the leaderboards, I'm going to give it an S tier. Now, a, a controversial pick. Um, this is a tough one. Uh, the 980 Pro, I'm going to give a D tier. Um, people are going to be pissed off at this. It is a fast SSD. It's actually best in class. It's PCIe Gen 4. Uh, it's actually really decently high performance. has good sustained bandwidth. And it has decently good performance in plotting. And actually, some of the top plotting results are with the 980 Pro on a Gen 4 system. Um, why am I giving it a D tier? There's so many better SSDs you can pick for this price point that have tons of endurance that are not bottle, gonna be bottlenecked. Um, now, if you're buying a super expensive SSD, you want to plot with it and then use it for something else. You don't wanna wear it out plotting. And um, as you guys know, I've created the Chia SSD Endurance Wiki. And if you go to that wiki, and I've just uh, actually popped in, um, this is the 980 Pro, if I can scroll over. Uh, I popped in the two terabyte model. You can see 980 Pro, two terabyte. If you guys, I'll, I'll send you guys a link. You can look through this, but you can actually hear input. You can put GIB per minute. And I just had an estimate before for the old plotting process of like 0.3 GIB per minute times the number of concurrent plots, but you can actually put in the Mad Max rate. So if you go back to my plotting spreadsheet, I have a tab here called GIB per minute that actually automatically gets updated when you put in the times. This is really interesting because if you look at this guy, he claims to have 870 second plots with a Samsung 980 Pro at 6.9883 GIB per minute. Then if you pop that into the endurance spreadsheet, um, this shows that a Samsung 980 Pro, well, I, I give a range. So the way that the, the plot, the endurance uh, spreadsheet works is you have a range of what the worst case plotted is going to be if the drive is full, you don't have trim on, um, kind of bad conditions that's the what the spec sheet says for um, the tbw and then there's the waf one which is the drive is close to empty the drive is getting trim and if you're using a two terabyte drive in mad max 
per, you, the drive is going to be less than 50% full. So in the best case, if you get a perfect write amp of one, which means every bit of data you write to the, to the, as from the host that you're writing only one for the NAND, remember WAF is NAND writes over host writes. So WAF of one is perfect garbage collection efficiency. Um, if you get that, this two terabyte Samsung drive can plot 507, uh, uh, TIB of plots before wearing out. And then, you know, my calculation is uh, with a WAF of one is 6597 TBW. Remember the spec sheet says 1200 TBW for this drive, but I'm saying for a WAF of one, you can most likely get about 6.5 uh, petabytes written. Okay, so why is this a bad drive? So it writes pretty fast and you can see the sustained write bandwidth is 1.6 uh, gigabytes per second and that would mean even at the best case you're going to wear this drive out in 47 days um, as you can see there's a lot of people that are plotting with this in the plotting channel um, yeah it's a really fast drive but it wears out uh, way faster than other drives that you can get for this price point so uh, for that i'm going to have my controversial uh, d tier for the samsung 980 pro uh, now we're going to take a little bit of skipping around here. Let me, let me dig around my components here and find what I'm looking for, which is the, wait, where are you? Aha, epic. And server in the God tier. I'm going to give the epic, the God tier. If you guys saw somebody, somebody in the spreadsheet with Mad Max has this um, basically this uh, user Pente has a uh, 2x7742 Epix. So these are the 64 core uh, Epix. And he's got a bunch of NVMe drives. And um, he claims to, in the spreadsheet, be doing 12 parallel plots with Mad Max at 3,500 seconds a piece and 29 TIB a day. Uh, with this same system, a yeah, user Zornox um, has basically confirmed that with the 64 core system on Bladebit, which is the all DRAM plotter. Remember, you need 416 gigabytes of DRAM. So this is not a very user-friendly machine. You really need a server class to perform this uh, all DRAM uh, plotting in Bladebit. But he's claiming to get about five minute plot times, which would give you about 28 TIB a day. So in all DRAM plotting this machine, uh, you know, with Threadripper Pro and Epic, um, you know, these 32 and 64 core variants are just absolute beasts in plotting. And for the God tier, I'm going to give the dual 64 core Epic with blade bit, the God tier. Um, the other God tier I'm going to give is, uh, let's see, I'm going to give it an S tier. I'm going to give this, the other one I spent a lot of time with. If you guys have looked at the spreadsheet, you'll see these, um, uh, this, my, my good friend, Alan, who is, has input his uh, data into the spreadsheet. Um, user Malventano is, uh, he's using a super micro workstation board and this is the X12 SPA TF. And if you guys saw, um, Intel just recently launched the Ice Lake workstation versions. He's actually using the Xeon version of this chip, which is the 8360AQ, um, you know, in which you can, you can click on the link here and it'll take you to the, uh, the page, but this is a 30 core, 38 core CPU. And this is a single socket system. And He's using a P5800X SSD, which you guys may know, I'm a huge fan of this SSD. This is the fastest SSD in the world. This is Intel Optane PCIe Gen 4. It maxes out the PCIe Gen 4 bus. It has 100 drive writes per day. It is an absolute beast for plotting. So in his systems, this plotting output with the P5800X on Gen 4 with Ice Lake is actually beating TempFS with DRAM. I mean, he's having faster plot times to this Gen 4 at NVMe with Optane than he is with TempFS. I have some theories on that. One is TempFS is just not as optimized for block storage as it could be. Um, my other theory is that this plotting process is very memory bandwidth intensive. So actually freeing up some of that memory bandwidth for the um, plotting alg algorithm by moving the data from the PCIe bus instead of the DRAM bus is actually a good thing. Uh, but on this system, he's actually produced the single best plot time I have seen with Mad Max, which is 666 seconds. Um, and then the same system, he's producing about 15 terabytes a day output, TIB a day, using three instances, three instances of Mad Max on just one SSD. He's running them all to the same SSD. He told me that he's basically seeing this SSD about seven gigabytes per second right on, in this one SSD. So this is just absolute beast. And for that, um, 
you know, this Supermicro workstation, the Xeon workstation, and the Optane go into the S tier. Um, I mentioned Bladebit. Um, I'm going to put the Ice Lake into God tier. I have some unconfirmed results that we have an under five minute plot on uh, using the Ice Lake with <laughs> Bladebit. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to publish some data soon from one of the partners that I'm working with that has tested this out. I can't wait to test it out myself. Uh, I still don't have a system, um, but this would be amazing. This is like, you know, if we can get down to like four minute plot times with, uh, you know, maxing out PCIe uh, Gen 4, DDR4, and this uh, third gen Ice Lake, then potentially, you know, you're at like almost 40 TIB a day on a system. So this is a God tier. Again, uh, God tier because, you know, one, I don't suspect anybody can afford this. <laughs> Two, is impossible to get right now because everything's just sold out and way back ordered. But uh, if you guys do get a, um, you know, get your hands on a third gen uh, Xeon scalable processor, which is Code name Ice Lake, uh, boy, you guys are, are lucky. Um, okay, what next? Uh, there's a lot of people plotting with like, whoa, did something weird here. Uh, there's a lot of people plotting with old Dell servers, and uh, I'm gonna give these a C because if you've seen, I bought um, in the plotting spreadsheet, I bought this uh, Dell uh, 740 XD. Um, where are we? Uh, if you guys look at the plotting spreadsheet, you can see I have this R740XD. This is a great, you know, supports up to 12 NVMEs if you buy these retimer cards. Um, you know, I, I got this system for 3000 bucks on eBay with two 22 core CPUs and 256 gigs of DRAM. So I got a pretty good deal. Um, now I am seeing about 11 TIB a day, uh, right here, or sorry, 10 TIB a day with two instances of Mad Max. I'm using TempFS and DRAM. I could probably get 11 or 12 TIB a day if I use uh, an Optane as as the core temp and not use all the DRAM bandwidth. Um, right now, I'm just using the Mad Max with the TempFS on the Dash 2. So uh, this is a really good value. Now, a bunch of people are using the R730 XDs from before. Anything with these old um, high core count Dell machines are doing pretty good in plotting and they're good value. Dells are easy to manage. They have this iDRAC management so you can install the operating system and remote in to do BIOS updates and all that crap. So I, I really like working with Dell servers, especially for people that are new to servers. It's really helpful to have all that stuff. So I'm going to put that in the C tier. Uh, good performance. You know, if you get a good deal on them, you, they can be good value. But really, they're overpriced for most people to be plotting on for general purpose. Uh, okay, A tier. Oh, yes, my first pick. As you guys know, in the Chio um, Decentral SSD buying guide, I recommend the P5510 as kind of our one of our top SSDs for plotting. It's PCIe Gen 4. It has instant trim time for um, you know, really good trim performance and formatting. Uh, it basically has 4.1 gigabytes per second sequential write, 3.84 terabytes drive, so lots of capacity. This was a really good drive for the old plotter because you could run many, many uh, instances in parallel and the performance would scale very well. On Mad Max, it's great too. You still have a bunch of sustained write bandwidth and you have tons of endurance. So this is just an all around good pick. If you get a good price on this drive, you can find the 3.84 terabyte version for like seven or 800 bucks on eBay. Uh, this is just a kick-ass plotting drive. You'll see a lot of people that have used this for plotting are now reselling them in the channel and they're only about 10% used with endurance and they've plotted, you know, petabytes of data. So uh, these things are absolute beasts. So for that, I give it an A tier. Um, I'm also gonna give the A tier to the Optane the old Optane, so the 905P. Um, you guys mentioned Intel discontinued this drive, but they maybe um, bring it back to Newegg for some Optane uh, and Chia promotion because this thing is just such an awesome drive for uh, for plotting. So Optane is super high endurance. The consumer versions of the Optane drive have a less drive rights per day version than, than the data center version, but truth be told, this is exactly the same drive as the data center version as the P4800X. The 905P is the same controller, just some different firmware optimizations. It doesn't have all the SM bus and sideband management for the you need for data center management. Um, but you can, even though the smart only says that it has 10 drive rights per day, which is still more than you'll probably ever touch plotting, um, it's actually much higher than that. And uh, the sustained bandwidth, because it's Optane, it's not NAND, uh, you just get consistent performance, low latency, and super high endurance. So these things are awesome for plotting. I just saw that you can get the 900p, um, you can get the 280 gigabyte versions for. Um, you know, 300 bucks on eBay. The 960 gigabyte version is going to be selling a new egg for a thousand or no, 700 bucks, which is an amazing deal. And for plotting, it's just the all around amazing drive. So, uh, boy, if you can get your hands on one of these again, they were sold out, but 
Intel's gonna be bringing some of them back and you can find them on eBay. These are awesome for plotting. Uh, where to next? Um, the regular Threadripper, I'm gonna give an A tier because if you guys look at the plotting spreadsheet, um, yeah, most of the people that have these Threadrippers, the, that 3970X um, are getting about 10 to 11 TIB a day. Um, you can see this guy is getting eight. Um, I've seen these guys go up about about to about 10 TIB a day. Let's see here. This guy is getting nine TIB a day. Uh, so this is just an all around good processor. Uh, I know this one, the 3970X, can't remember if that's the 32 core, uh, but yeah, the 32 core variant is getting about 10 TIB a day. Um, now it's a little bit expensive, so arguably I might have to drop this to the B tier just because it would be an A tier for performance, but you know, just because of, uh, I'm gonna have to put it in the B tier. Um, you know, just, I think it's a $2,000 CPU for 32 cores. Well, you can buy 32 core data center CPUs, which I definitely are not as fast as the Threadripper, but you can buy 32 core data center SS, uh, CPUs for much, much cheaper. Or you can buy two 16 cores for, you know, like three to 500 bucks each if you get them, uh, you know, used. So I'm gonna put that in the B tier, although, you know, a lot of people are big AMD fans. Um, you know, I am giving the Threadripper an S tier, so don't don't hate me so much. Uh, I am going to give, oh boy, the, the i7 almost would be an A tier. Just price performance is an A tier, but for all around plotting, it's a B tier. I'm able to get about 3.5 TIB a day on my budget build. This is the i7-10700. Um, you can get these CPUs for 250 bucks. I've seen them as low as 220 bucks for eight core. The you know all core turbo, you can get to 4.6 gigahertz if you tune the BIOS. These things are just awesome price to performance. You know, you can get the, um, in that spreadsheet I have, the TIB per day divided by the system cost. And this i7 will out, undoubtedly in the budget build still be the best value for plotting. Now, the output is not super high. You know, you might get, you know, three and a half TIB a day per system. But, you know, on a system that's sub thousand dollars, that's very, very good. So I'm going to leave this in the B tier. Uh, where are we? Okay, MP600. Um, I don't know, a lot of people disagree with my pick having this drive be the, um, you know, as in, in one of my best NVMe drives for M.2s. Um, you know, again, I, I recommend data center SSDs because they're just much better value, but uh, I had to use these drives in my brother-in-law's build. Uh, I have two of them in RAID 0 because, you know, he's just got an integrated system and I needed an M.2 that I could get off Amazon. Um, and they're doing very well. I'm right now. I'm running Mad Max on them. I'm, I'm replotting for him uh, to do the pool plots. And during that first phase of Mad Max, when it's writing out phase one, each of these drives in RAID zero is getting 1.4 gigabytes a second bandwidth. So it's writing about 2.8 gigabytes a second bandwidth on a 10 core machine. Um, this is very good. And the, I've plotted. I plotted his 70 terabytes once, and then I'm plotting it again for the pools. And these things are about 15% wear. Um, so these, they're just holding up really well. So I, I, I'm just going to give this an all around good C, C pick. It's not the fastest gen four drive. It's got really good TBW and it's just been very, very good performance. Um, now I'm going to put the B tier, the tried and true, my original pick for NVMe SSDs for plotting was the P4610. These are still amazing SSDs. If you can get, you know, a 1.6 terabyte or 3.2 terabyte, you know, for inexpensive cost, they have. Tons of endurance, you know, 3.3 3 gigabytes a second sustained right bandwidth, just, you know, uh, un, uh, unbeatable, um, you know, data integrity and reliability. Like the failure rate on these are abysmally low. They were one of Intel's most popular drives. If you updated them to the latest firmware, they're just unbreakable. So I've used these in all tons of plotting systems and uh, yeah, they are just unstoppable. So I'm going to give those uh, P4610 a B tier. Uh, now, okay, where, where, so this is my, if you go, boy, okay, let me remember, this is my super micro system. If you go to my spreadsheet, I put in this, uh, super micro cascade lake, and it's this SYS, uh, 1029, uh, U, T, and 10 RT. Well, that's a crazy silly name, but I have two 16 core, uh, Xeon gold six six twenty six uh, 6226 R's, and, um, Right now I'm getting about 11 TIB a day out of that system, uh, but it's super easy to work with. It's got 12 NVMe slots in the front panel. This is just an awesome one U server. It takes about four to 500 watts. So it's very power efficient and space efficient. This is just a kick-ass server. Um, so that's gonna go with my B tier pick. Now, 
this might seem like a very specific B tier pick, but it's in the spreadsheet and I really like these super micro servers. Any of these super micro Xeon servers uh, are gonna get a B tier pick for me. Um, uh, you know, along with that lines, you've seen a lot of in the plotting hardware spreadsheet, I have these things called the wolf paths, which is, this is the code name for Intel's reference platform on Skylake and Cascade Lake. And these are just kick-ass servers. Um, so the 2U variant has one uh, version that has you know eight drives or 12 three and a half inch drives in the front panel i like this version that has eight two and a half inch drives it's very inexpensive you can find them on ebay for under a thousand dollars new and you just have to buy the cpus and dram these are the bare bones and they have four oculent connectors on the board and you just buy a ten dollar oculent cable and you connect that to the backplane this combo hot swap backplane supports nvme sas and sata in the same backplane so this is a kick-ass server you can hook up four nvme drives without adding any additional cost to the system and then you can just buy these used uh, Xeon Gold CPUs on eBay for 300 bucks. You can get 16 core CPUs for 300 bucks. Um, you can get like the QS versions or you can buy production versions used of the uh, Xeon Gold 6130s. And these systems can do like eight, eight TIB a day. Um, and they're just super easy to work with. They have like tons of adding card slots in the back for NICs and for HBAs and other stuff. Um, and they're very easy to build. And the fi firmware and BIOS updates work very easily. Um, I'm just going to be selfish here and give it a B tier pick because I love this server. I have a bunch of them and, um, yeah, they've been very well for all the uh, people I've helped, you know, build these up. It's been helpful. Ah, uh, so SATA drive. I love the, like the Intel S4610s and S4510s. They're great drives. I use them for boot drives. Um, if you get the small capacity ones, like the 480 gigabyte drives and raid them together, you can get good plotting performance, but you just take up so many SATA slots. Now in an old server that has 24 SATA, two and a half inch bays, that might not be an issue. But for the most part, you know, you want your SATA slots for the hard drives, for farming, you, know, you want, you know, there's some users that have like really good results rating like 12 of these together for plotting, but it's just too much of a pain in the ass when there's high performance NVMEs that are 16 times faster than SATA. SATA is great for cheap and easy to attach, but it's not very fast. The SATA bus is limited to about 550 megabytes per second. Um, so you're gonna be severely bottlenecked uh, by plotting on a SATA drive. So I'm gonna give it a D tier. Even though I love the SATA drives, uh, for other things, um, very easy to backup data on, throw data around and plug into different systems. But for plotting, it's a big fat no. And where were we? Okay, the Broadwell server. This is really, so this is the most surprising pick that I have from the, the plotting. I bought this system. Um, you can buy them bare bones. The same place I recommended in Oakland. Uh, it's one of these warehouses that people can buy used hardware from. A lot of people went out and took my recommendation early on in the Chia, if you guys were around and bought some uh, JBODs from these guys, uh, they're selling this same server, this SYS uh, 1028R WTNR. This is a Broadwell super micro server. It supports two NVMEs, it supports Broadwell, which these uh, I'm using these uh, 14 core Xeon E5 2690V4s, uh, and it gets 120 gigabytes of DRAM. I bought it brand new like this for 1200 bucks. You can get it bare bones for $400. These are freaking awesome servers. And with Mad Max, with using 110 gigs as my TempFS, um, I'm actually getting 6.26 TIB a day on this old server that was 1200 bucks. So it's actually the most, as far as price to performance, this is performing about as good as the budget build and it's a rack mountable server. Um, and you can reuse it after for other cool things. So uh, I am, I'm gonna put this in, oh gosh, it's almost an A tier for value, just old Broadwell servers. I'm gonna put it in the A tier. And I, ha I think I had it in the B tier before, but I'm gonna upgrade it to A tier because the value on these old old systems. Now, this is my super micro system. Anybody who's buying an old Dell, like a, an R, I think it's this generation would, would be a 730 or like a 630 or an HP Gen 9 or any Broadwell based system that has a Xeon V3 or V4. These are kicking ass in Mad Max because you have lots of cores. You can use the TempFS for the DRAM and you get good DRAM bandwidth for the temporary storage and they are just doing awesome. So um, I'm gonna keep in the A tier. Uh, my last A tier pick is this new PNY LX3030. So if you guys saw, I did a podcast, uh, sorry, a, a video on YouTube with uh, the CTO of Fizon, Sebastian, and we posted it on the Chia YouTube channel um, talking about the new maker SSDs that are optimized for Chia plotting. So their two terabyte version has 54 TBW, 5400 TBW, so 54 petabytes written. And this thing has been awesome. I've been using it to plot. I've written about two petabytes to it and it's about 2% used. So this thing is just amazing. It's an M.2 form factor. It's not overheating. It fits on every system. 
Now, my recommendation would actually be the one terabyte version of this because you can still get um, with the, the SLC that they use, SLC NAND that they use, they can get max performance on a one terabyte, about 2,400 megabytes per second sustained bandwidth at a one terabyte. And so for Mad Max, this is really perfect. It's gonna be in the kind of $400, $500 range, I think. I don't know what they're gonna price it at, but um, the one terabyte version is gonna be perfect for Mad Max. Tons of endurance and sustained bandwidth. They disable all that caching, SLC caching stuff. It's just pure SL SLC mode. So this is an awesome pick for plotting. Uh, again, I've been using it and it's not, you know, it's not um, slowed down one bit in, I think I've written about two petabytes to it, the one that they gave me to test. So this, this continues to kick ass. I'm gonna leave it in the A tier. Um, that technology that Fison had, that's gonna be powering the PNY SSD. It's also powering the Sabrent Plot Ripper. I know we saw another announcement from ADATA, the prospector uh, for Chia Plotting Drive. I have not got my hands on that or talked to them yet, but I, I do plan on doing that. So super excited about all these SLC drives for Chia Plotting. I think we're gonna end up seeing 256 gigabyte and 512 gigabyte versions of all these because with Mad Max, they'll actually perform very good with SLC only mode. Um, and it'll be a much lower price point, like a hundred bucks, 200 bucks. So. I'm super excited for all these Chia optimized plotting drives. And so we're down to the F tier. Um, so I have a bunch of 660Ps and 670Ps in my client systems. Like if I'm building a system for my mom or something, this is what I would put in there because 99% of people, this is the right drive. It's super low cost. It's QLC. They have a good SLC cache. So the bursty performance is very good. It's insanely low power so for good battery life. Uh, this is a great drive, but it's not good for Chia plotting. QLC, you know, is not good for sustained bandwidth and the Chia plotting just wipes out the SLC cache. And even with Mad Max mode, the firmware is not really optimized for this. You know, even if you were able to stay in the SLC cache on the two terabyte version, um, the endurance is not really optimized for switching back and forth between SLC and QLC like that many times. So yeah, ah, man, I just wish, um, uh, yeah, the QLC is great for lots of things. Not it, Now these would make great farming drives because they would be zero idle power and they could farm with zero energy use. And uh, you know, once these get to like five cents a gigabyte, maybe they might be kind of interesting for these. You know, once people get to like eight terabyte M.2s at five cents a gigabyte that have zero power consumption, like five milliwatt idle, uh, that might be actually pretty interesting for farming because um, you know, people that want to buy some drives and make some really low power farms. But for plotting, they are a big no. So. This also goes with the Sabrent. I, I hate Sabrent's marketing just because all the drives names look the same to me. Uh, I might just not be reading them close enough. They don't post the TBW on the website. Now I am excited that they're doing the Plot, or, plot Ripper um, and that will be a very good drive. Hopefully they get that out soon, but their QLC, the Rocket Q, if you're gonna be at, I've had tons of people that are like, I bought the Rocket Plus and it's plotting like crap. Um, well, you bought the Rocket Q and that's QLC and that's uh, not good for plotting. So I'm gonna give these an F tier as well. So. Um, there we have it. I guess this is it. Uh, I um, Again, I've had a lot of fun kind of digging through this plotting spreadsheet. I love when people are adding new uh, hardware to it. Um, I'm going to be trying to post all my systems as I, I have a few. I have a few that I need to post on that. Uh, I meant, I just remember that I have some systems using that, um, you know, maker SSD from Fizon that I'm going to put on the spreadsheet. Uh, but I've been putting all my systems on here, just kind of playing around with Mad Max. Um, Again, the things I'm most excited about are Bladebit. This is just so cool. I'm gonna try to get some systems with high DRAM so I can test this thing out and maybe do some videos on it. Um, the other thing I, I mentioned is just with Mad Max, there's so many different configs now that work. Almost everything just works for plotting. So the best thing for plotting is just, you know, if you buy some used enterprise drives, like I mentioned in my initial recommendation, that's still a very good deal, but there's so many cool options for plotting now. So. There's not really a one size fits all approach for chia plotting. Anything that computes will help do chia plotting now, but I, I certainly have graded this in the or, order I think that they're, they should be in. So uh, with that, uh, hopefully you guys thought this was interesting. Thanks guys, we'll talk later, bye-bye.